um, <clears throat> I was told the story. It was, uh, I was about 20 years ago. I was um, in my early, very early 20s, about 21 years old, and um, I was having an argument with my then partner um, about whether or not gay people were political anymore. And this was um, during, uh, in, the, in the 1990s, there was another smaller miners' strike, um, much smaller. It was sort of the end of the, 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 that union and, and, and that industry being closed down. So there was a little tiny miners' strike going on. And um, uh, my then boyfriend was saying, uh, you know, that we ought to be supporting the miners. And I said, why should I support the miners? They don't support me. And he said, well, let, let me, me tell, tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did. Um, he didn't know much of the story, um, but he was a bit older. He was ten years older than me, which is what entitled him to talk like he was Che Guevara, um, <laughs> I guess. And uh, he said um, he'd been at the Pride March where the the miners led the march, so he'd seen it. Um, I was um, I thought it would make a wonderful film um, immediately as soon as I was you know because how, how could you not really that's what I thought um, but, but but apparently you, it is possible to not see that <laughs> possibility because nobody else did and also I was 21 so when you say to someone I, you know I've had an idea for an enormous British feature film about gay and lesbian activists you don't they don't tend to take you very seriously um, so it took a long time for anyone people said things like why don't you do it on the radio. Why don't you do it as a puppet show? And you know, <laughs> nothing. Nobody would would see. But what I thought, what I felt was that the, the story, the treatment that the story required was was should be related to the to, to to what happened. So LGSM took what they did and their message into the mainstream, and that's why I felt very strongly it should be a mainstream film. And I felt very strongly that it, what I didn't want to do was make a film that would be not that there's anything wrong with films like this, but that would be at, at LGBT film festivals all around the world and that nobody else would see it. I wanted to make a film that belonged in the mainstream because it's it's not a film, it's not a gay film right. in the sense that it's it's about you know things that are very universal. Even if had you been 40 years old at that time, had a little bit more credits under your belt, I suspect the reaction would have been the same. Yeah. What were the, when the people were suggesting you do it as a puppet theater or as a radio play, what was their concern about the content, even though this, the world in theory had changed since yeah. then? They would say things like, you know, people don't ever say we can't make a, we won't spend that money on gays and lesbians. <laughs> but they said things like it would be very difficult to bring a commercial audience to that story. That would that was the the thing I was mostly told, um, and it and it is you know that's 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 true. They're not wrong about that. That ca it can be, um, and I gave up on it really right. after after a while. Um, people said you know, uh, eventually I had a, a a general meeting. This was you know so twenty years later, and by then I had a play on at the National Theatre. I was older. I was you know more established, and I had a bit more clout, and I had a general meeting with David Livingston, the producer, and. Um, uh, I, d I just didn't even bring it up. He was pitching me some nice romantic comedies and I, I was uh, sort of deflecting them. And then at the end of the meeting, I had my coat on. and it was, I was standing at the door and he said, slightly frustrated that I didn't want to do any of his romantic comedies. He said, are there any stories you're burning to tell? And it had just started raining. And I thought, well, I'm not going to go out into the street. So I may as well tell him, tell him the story of LGSM. And I said, I now know this is the best thing you can ever say in a pitch. But at the time, I promise you it was innocent. And I think you can only do it once. But I said, yes. I said, I, I, I have this one story, but nobody will ever make it. And it's kind of, it's a challenge. His sort of vanity was, you know, and he went, well, I might. You know, he this looks is the like, one mountain that hasn't been climbed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's something sort of got to him. And I, so I told him the story. I mean, I had to really dredge it up because right. I hadn't told you it for a long time. You just put it away both yeah. physically and emotionally. Gone, finished with, forget it. Had you even written it? No, I hadn't written a word. Um, and I said, um, so I told him the story as best I could remember it. And it just sort of came back to me as I went along. Um, and I found myself going, oh, yeah, Wales. Yeah, they went to Wales. And, uh, <laughs> and, I, and, I, um, and I finished the story. And I, I, he was, um, like a lot of us film people, you know, he's, he's a combination of ruthless and sentimental. So he... <laughs> I could see on one eye he was thinking that's an incredible opportunity, while the other eye just had a tear going down the thing. And he, he said the same thing that everyone always says to whenever I told the story, which was, is that true? And I said, yeah, it's true. And he said, and he said I'll commission it. Wow. So you have kind of put it out of your mind. Uh, you know the story kind of on its bare bone details. What kind of reference is available? What, I mean, there's not been a book published about this. 
did the uh, did the actual organizers of this keep records? Did they keep photographs? Did they keep videos? What was yeah. or film? What was available to you? The, uh, because it was a pre Google <laughs> group. What's, uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, Google. I mean, I know this is going to be a hard thing for people to appreciate. It was very hard to um, to find anything um, at all. Um, what I did find, which was incredible, they did make a film of the, their own, a video, um, in 1985, which I found weirdly because one of them, Jeff, who is the character in the film who is played by Freddie Fox, he's the one at the beginning who's concerned he has a love bite and that all the kids loved him. He was the sort of pin-up of the village. Um, he's now a Buddhist monk called Upek Shapriya. I mean, you know, don't tell me that f fact isn't stranger than fiction. And, and on his website, he, he had put up a, um, this, this uh, you know, he'd put up this little video um, so I watched it and it was full of, you know, the story and it was full of the real people. But because it was a, you know, they were, in, and I mean this in the very best sense of the word, they were amateurs. So they observed none of the disciplines of documentary filmmaking, no, no names up on the screen. So when someone is interviewed, they just are interviewed. You don't know who they are or what they're doing or why they're there. So I basically watched this thing over and over again. Um, and at the end of it, there was a credits card you know one card with with thanks to and a list of names and I thought well if I cross-reference the most unusual names <laughs> on Facebook I might you know I might find them you know I thought my mum's on Facebook you know these guys are going to be in their 50s this has got to work and there was someone on there called Reggie Blenner Hassett <laughs> And I, there's and probably I, own, only <laughs> one Reggie yeah, Blenner Hassett there's got to be only one and indeed th and there he was well there was a picture of a smiling middle-aged man on a yacht and I sent him a message saying, are you the Re Reggie Blennerhassett who was in LGSM in 1984? And a message came straight back. And it, he said, um, I haven't been asked that question in 30 years. What can you possibly want? And I told him and he said, yeah, I'll meet you. Wow. So when you start talking to these people and you have a, a, a picture in your own mind of what happened, what was the big revelation of what actually happened that kind of conflicted with your understanding of what had happened? I think... Um, I always had a notion of I knew that the mar that I knew that what I thought was I had this the I knew that the the group had started collecting money at Gay Pride eighty four, and I knew that in Gay Pride eighty five, a couple hundred miners came and marched, so I had that. So I knew I had a beginning and an end, and I really thought I'll just have to pad the middle out a bit, you know. I'll put in a love story, or maybe you know someone could die, you know the way you do, and. Um, uh, and, but then as I started to research and I started to talk to them, I realized that there would be absolutely no padding necessary. The more, I mean, for example, watching the, the video, there was a young woman in there, um, a 25-year-old young mother, housewife. Um, and the way that she talked to the camera, the way she engaged with the camera, and the way that she answered questions, you d I just was someone with a fierce intellect, working class, a w young working class woman with a fierce intellect and a fierce curiosity about the world. And she was so charismatic. And I said to one of the guys that I was talking to, first person I spoke to before Reggie, because he was on holiday, I found someone else. And he couldn't really remember very much about it. But we watched the video together and I would say, who's that, who's that, who's that? And this young woman was there and he said, oh yeah, that's Sean. He said, I think something happened to her. <laughs> I said, okay, right, something good. And he said, yeah, she became, she maybe was on the town council. So I thought, well, that's a great story. And then I Googled her name and saw that she had Become an MP. Yeah, had <laughs> surpassed the town council <laughs> and was now one of the lawmakers in the mother of all parliaments. So yeah, that, I know. Yeah, things like that just went. You know, you, I, I realized at that point that, that the story was just going to keep yielding. There are, I guess, uh, four different kinds of ways to look at the story. You have the story about the collaboration from these two disparate groups. You have a story of this one young man kind of coming out and discovering himself. Uh, you have uh, the, the birth of the AIDS epidemic. As you're kind of trying to figure out which of those four poles to focus on, how does one weigh over the other, and what was the balancing act that you tried to strike between those stories? Yeah, I think uh, the story of Joe and and uh, was as I was writing um, was 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 in the foreground the most, and and Joe is a character. I created that character in order to give the audience a hand into the screen, really, because the you know the past is a foreign country, and and I think for an audience sitting there thinking, I don't know anything about gay and lesbian life in 1980s London, or nor do I know anything about trade unionism in Wales. You know, neither does he. So so he's the person who can ask all the questions, and I think because I didn't know. When I first wrote the screenplay, he featured very heavily. His story featured very heavily. And then I came to a point where I thought, why am I focusing on this made-up story that isn't very interesting <laughs> set in the suburbs when I've got this incredible true story? So that, that was pulled right back.
it's 30 years after the fact. Today, earlier in Los Angeles, there's thousands of pe people marching in the AIDS walk. I'm curious, even though this movie is a period film in some ways, what do you think its modern relevance is and what do you hope people take away from this story? It's interesting because also, you know, living in, living in, in metropolitan um, liberal cities, uh, it, it can be easy for us to, to forget uh, how in so many other parts of the world or even parts of the country, um, life is very different for people who are different, LGBT spe specifically. But um, I suppose in terms of what the, my intention was, I wanted to do a couple of things really, mostly related to young people. I wanted to, because LGSM were young, I mean their average age was 24. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, I wanted to present a group of people, young LGBT people, um, uh, to other young LGBT people in a film that was not about sex, where it wasn't about, you know, the, the, because I, I, it concerns me that for a, so much about the LGBT community is focused on, on sex and sexuality, and, and there's so much more to us and to life, and, you know, and also that I think I, I, it concerns me that young LGBT people learn that their only value is sexual, uh, you know, when they, when they arrive, when they come out, and I think that's dangerous for us all and also I wanted to um, show what happened in LGSM the reason why it was a success I think is because or why it was such a game changer is because they showed up and we live in an age now where you know you can click and you can be an activist you know remotely and virtually uh, and you can link with thousands of people all over the world in all kinds of ways but there is nothing there is unfortunately no substitute I know fortunately not unfortunately there is no substitute for the act of standing and facing somebody face to face and shaking their hand and saying here I am to support you bodily here physically and it's that which made the difference it's that which made the difference to that, that eroded the prejudice in Wales and that made the difference for LGSM so I wanted to kind of say that's important we have to keep doing that we have to keep showing it's boots on the ground and also with the character of Joe there's a scene in the film where you see him running into his bedroom and he throws his old childish records down on the bed discards them and he's got you know he looks better and he puts up the stranglers and the eurythmics and the message of that scene really for young people is if you get involved in activism any activism at all but if you get involved in life in politics your clothes will improve <laughs> your music will improve and you will get laid and I can't think of if that isn't going to get him to do it I don't know what will <laughs>